everyone, it's Lynn again, just your local Gen Z Zoomer Instagram professional Instagram veteran. And I am here today to spill the secrets, to spill the tea on the tray that is having a good Instagram. You know, is social media a little bit superficial? Is it a little or a lot capitalistic? Yes, it is. It's Mark Zuckerberg's world, and we're just living in it, in case you haven't got the memo. Nevertheless, Instagram is a lot more than just having a very aesthetic feed or, you know, posing with your ice latte and doing peace signs, you know? <laughs> Instagram can be a creative outlet. It can be a space where people form communities, and it's also a place where you can develop your brand and business. I'm not telling you to be an influencer, but there is so much value in knowing how Instagram analytics and engagement work, having the basic photography and editing skills that you can put on a job resume, and also Instagram Instagram should be fun and I feel like Instagram has not been fun lately. So in today's video, I'll be running through on how I take self timer photos and public, the equipment I use and how I brainstorm ideas for concepts. And I'll also be breaking down my editing process and going through like what applications I use and also some tips and tricks on how to make sure that your Instagram's popping. So without further ado, let's jump right on in. Talk about equipment, y'all. I usually use my iPhone 11 because it's very portable, it's easy to use on a go, and the camera's very suitable. You see, I used to have a Google Pixel 3, which had a way better camera than the iPhone, but everyone bullied me into getting an iPhone once I reached college, and everyone was like, ah, ha, ha, you, your messages are green, huh? Apple supremacy, ha, ha, ha. Um, anyways, you don't need a fancy DSLR to take nice photos. I usually use this with my tripod, or I balance it precariously against things, because I'm, I'm lazy. When I need more ease and convenience, convenience and you know a very crisp nice image i use my canon g7x mark ii it's a very typical youtube camera and yes i know my camera is really broken i should put it in some rice i've had this baby for almost two years it's working great and the best thing about it is the flip up viewfinder if y'all like me and don't have a significant other to act as a human tripod i have my vlogging and my typical camera tripod on hand and can i get a drum roll for our big boy the panasonic lumix gh5 oh my gosh this thing was so expensive i'm definitely gonna write it off as a tax deductible this is my main video camera for YouTube now and I also use it when I'm taking photos for people like senior portraits or family portraits. No, you don't need to buy this for the gram. This is only for something if you're invested in the trade. Otherwise, a phone is just gonna do just fine. And when it comes to creating or shooting content, your best resource is gonna be inspiration. I love my Instagram saved, my Pinterest boards where I pin various things to kind of inspire color palettes, and of course other people. I love that social media, although it has a long ways to go, is emphasizing representation and diversity seeing people like me different body types and different ideas and beliefs is so inspiring and so uplifting and while some of my favorite grams are selfies i love creative concepts i love challenging myself and being able to consume other pieces of art inspires me to do that <laughs> Y'all, you know, I've been there, I've been there, I've been in front of a camera before and I don't know what the fuck to do with my limbs. Honestly, if you strike a JoJo pose when you're behind a camera, you're good. Marry me, actually. Marry me. No, I'm, I'm not no Coco Rocha, but I do have some moves. I have some poses down for when I'm behind the camera that I kind of just whip out now. A good rule of thumb is to always have a foot behind you and a foot in front because it makes you look taller. It adds a little it's bit so more dumb. diversity and the angles. All right, that's a bit much. Be excited to try out new poses, even if you feel dumb while doing it, or else, you know, you'll be me always peace. defaulting to peace. two peace signs. <laughs> peace, 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 peace. Everyone has different body shapes. Everyone has different features that they want to emphasize size and others that they don't. Following and making sure- that, Oh, you good there? Oh, 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 okay, okay. <gasps> Following people who have those features like you, who look like you, is so important. So, you know, feel you feel affirmed, you feel represented. And of course, interact with your environment. Cheapos. <laughs> Y'all, what do you do with your hands? What do you do with your hands? That is a question. Not the Macarena, Lynn, not the Macarena. <laughs> there are some things to do with your hands if you're ever shooting up close or even when you're shooting far away, you know, just to keep it nice and interesting. Trust me, I understand how awkward it is to not know what to do with your hands. And personally, I don't know if y'all are built different, but I do have sides to my face and angles that I prefer. I'm a bit self-conscious about my round face, so you'll never catch me looking straight at the camera. It's always a 45 degree angle. And I do prefer my left side now because there is a nose piercing. Before we move on to how to take the photos, let's talk about the importance of camera angles. All right, you know what? I'm 5'3 and a half and I do round it to 5'4, but according to my Instagram, 
I'm tall as fuck. And how do we do that, y'all? It's called angles and fooling the audience. I hope my kindergarten level illustration makes sense, but essentially you want to tilt your camera towards the person when you're up high towards their face, whereas you want to tilt away when you're towards their feet, and that'll create good perspective. Of course, you can change this when you get more advanced, but this is some good rule of thumb. Now, let's put that into action by taking some self timer photos. Hello! Oh, this is not flattering. Hello, everyone. Shoddy has hit the floor because the first location we're gonna use is the ground. Floor gang, floor gang. <laughs> Featuring my very many plants. And you might be wondering, Lynn, hey, there's something, something's different about you. Something about your energy, about your aura is, is a little bit not the same. And if you thought it was my glasses, you're right, because we have to talk about I Buy Direct, the sponsor of this video. A lot of people ask me, Lynn, where do you get your glasses from? And I always respond, I buy direct. The glasses that I've been wearing for the past two, two and a half years are actually from I buy direct, the little rounded ones that are gold with the tortoise shell sides. They're my favorite pairs of glasses I've ever had just because they flatter my face shape so well and they're very lightweight. It makes me look fashionable. It makes me look like an intellectual. And I buy direct recently released a new line of glasses, which we will talk about right now. I'm always working to be more environmentally conscious in my actions and in my purchases and I buy direct doing the same by moving towards a more sustainable future with the launch of their eco-conscious 5 to C collection in partnership with 1% for the planet. The glasses you see me modeling right here, they're not only cute, but they're also made up of five recycled single-use plastic bottles in order to keep plastic waste out of nature and out of our oceans. I love to see brands committing themselves to the necessity that is protecting our environment and our planet, so be sure to check out Odd by Direct and the frames that I'm wearing and use my discount code for a little bit of money off. So thank you to Odd by Direct for sponsoring this video and back to the regular broadcast. Let's move back. So you can see, here's my current setup. We're starting out with the iPhone front facing camera and let's see how it goes. Bathroom. This is where I shit and look at my phone for 30 minutes after taking a shower and crying my tears away. Um, yeah, anyways, you have a bathroom because the bathroom has a lot of things you can mess around with. It's, it's a little bit, you know, it's, it's not exactly chic, but it's kind of ironic in that way to be like all dressed up like I am now and taking photos in a bathroom. You have the mirror to play with, you have the bathtub, you have um, your toilet. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep on using my phone, except I'm gonna turn the lights off and I'm gonna use flash so it has that paparazzi film look. Hopefully it doesn't turn out shitty. Get it? Cause doo doo goes in the, the toilet. You can't see the toilet, but I'm pointing it. No, no, I'm stop. I'm stopping. Okay. It's a lovely setup. What you can see is I'm using my back facing camera. With the mirror right here, I can actually kind of see how it's framed. So that's very convenient. Inception! Ah! Leonardo DiCaprio! What's next one? If you're just starting out with photography or videography, the rule of thirds is a really easy way to master composition. You have a little 3x3 three three grid and then you use that grid to position your subject. I use this all the time, but then again, rules are meant to be broken, so once you kind of get this down, feel free to experiment. I'm wearing a skirt today because it's so warm. I actually moisturized my knees for the first time in forever because my knees don't see any sunlight during the winter so they're not ashy. I usually don't wear short skirts like this but this video is all about getting outside your comfort zone. So yeah we're gonna go to an alleyway today because an alleyway is great or any side of the building when you want to take photos and you don't want to run into people. <laughs> Voila the alleyway.
try that out, sitting down maybe? Now approaching from an upward angle. Ta-da. Yeah, angled it up. Cosine, uh, secant shit. Hello, we are done, I think. I think that's enough. I've spent like 20 minutes here. <laughs> I am now on my way to Safeway because I actually have to get some groceries but also the grocery store is a great place to take photos at because you're not unnecessarily going outside your house but also there's a lot of empty aisles you can like cozy away in you might be wondering Lynn how are you not embarrassed or like awkward when you're taking videos or you know taking photos in public well you know my entire life is an embarrassment so I'm kind of used to it by now also yes I am carrying around my big ass DSLR so <laughs> Not very uh, uh, sneaky with it today. When I did that, we were speaking about that nothing is really corny if you put it the way to do it. Shout out to Rice Krispies and offering a, a Twizzlers. Why well, don't I want to freeze my Nikes? I need to get some cinnamon toast crunch because I ran out months ago. Yo, that good shit. That good shit. <laughs> Okay, so I have my next outfit and I'm not sure if you know but it's National Women's History Month and instead of dressing to that white male gaze this outfit is for the girls the gays the theys I mean I mean I mean I mean it's so cute on this episode of tree hunters we are looking for a cherry blossom tree we see not one but two cherry blossom trees um, every outro of K-dramas ever when they accidentally fall on top of one another and come really close to kissing. Hello, this is Rachel and her friend and their dog. Hello, hello. So lovely to see you. I won't keep you too long. Now to preface going into post-production, let's talk about the difference between raw and processed images. When I'm using my camera, I always shoot in raw. Raw essentially allows you to have more data, more color and lighting data, whereas JPEG or HVEC on the iPhone automatically converts and processes your image, which allows for less flexibility while editing. I always recommend shooting raw on a DSLR. However, if you're on your phone, don't bother. There are apps and programs to convert your photos to raw when you shoot them. However, I feel like when you're shooting on a camera, you want that like smart smartphone look, so JPEG is the way to go, I guess. Hello everyone, it is very late at night, it is 11.30 p.m. So it is the optimal hours for Lynn to do her very good editing. I took a shower, I am in my sweatshirt and PJs. Very un-Catholic, <laughs> Betty Boop. <laughs> now it's time for one of my favorite parts, the editing post-production. I think a lot of people take pride in hashtag no filter, but as someone who took a lot of senior portraits and family portraits during high school, editing is a huge part of taking photos. Photos. And when it comes to social media and content creating, it's just another way to personalize and brand yourself and express your style. There's so many cool things, cool shit you can try out. So we're gonna tackle the basics today. I do have presets on my Etsy if you wanna get, but a lot of time I'll edit a photo from scratch instead of putting a preset on it because I think it's really fun and it helps you develop your you know, editing skill set. We're gonna start with the ones I'm the most excited for, which is the ones the alleyway. 
The first step, of course, is to get all my photos from my SD card or my phone to Lightroom. I love lifting my shadows because it brings back so much detail, and when you shoot in RAW, this allows you to do it without downgrading the quality. I also really love making my photos look flat in the sense of there's not a lot of lighting contrast, and instead, I make up for that with the color, so I'll bring down highlights and whites, you know, so it's really, really flat, unlike my ass. Once I'm done lifting all that, I also go in with the blacks to balance it all out and make sure that it's not too flat. <laughs> and of course, with crop, I always set it to 4x5 because that's the largest dimension that Instagram allows for, and then I'll position myself using the grid, the rule of thirds. Now it's time for my favorite part, the color. I always leave temperature and tint by themselves. I don't try to mess with them because unless your photo's really, really out of balance, you want to focus that in the HSLs or your curves or in your overtones. And if you're shooting a lot of human subjects, make sure that you don't go too overboard with the red, orange, yellow HSLs because those affect skin tone and skin color and you know you don't want anyone looking like an orange or a tomato or you know whitewash god forbid otherwise go ham with color throw things out of balance that's my suggestion and then bring it back to the balance that you find the most desirable i really love my blues to be aqua i like my greens to be saturated and hued differently depending on the photo and when it comes to split toning i always almost always put a cool tone in the shadows and then a warmer tone in the highlights in this photo i'm using a dark green in the shadows and a yellow in the highlights and voila you're essentially done the cool thing about this is that you can copy and paste your edits and apply it to photos in similar lighting and settings. In many cases, you'll probably need to adjust the lighting or tweak the colors a little bit, you know, but you'll learn as you edit more and more, you'll figure out what colors you like, how you like them in certain settings, and that can lead you to developing your own preset, your own style. One of my biggest recommendations when you're starting out is to look at other people's color grading and be like, I wonder how they did that. And then going to an editing app and trying to do it yourself, recreate that yourself, not necessarily so you can copy every bit of their style, but so you can learn from other artists, from other photographers, and then eventually incorporate those skills that you practice into your own work. Also, I'm getting a little bit sidetracked, but as you can see here, you can easily edit out with the healing brush some unnecessary things that you don't want in the photo, like the dress tag, for an instance. To adjust for perspective, for an instance, if you want to make your legs look a little bit longer, if you want to account for camera lens errors, you see here I'm messing around with the distortion a little bit to make sure all the lines are nice and tidy and straight and on this photo i am slapping on one of my presets it's called nectarine from the summer days pack i fell away from using these presets for a little bit because they're very warm toned and i do love you know editing with cooler tones and blues and greens now and i'm not sure if you can tell with my editing style but i've been returning to warmer tones i really love warm tones and i also love putting on grain as you can see this little photo has a bit of grain to you know um Conceal the fact that this was taken with an iPhone front camera. Most Gen Z thing is taking professional photos and then trying to make it look vintage and bad quality. <laughs> also, this is what happens when you shoot in RAW. I'm not sure you remember what these look like RAW, but damn, I look good. And also, I look like I have boobies in this photo. Like, oop. Oop. <laughs> The photos I took on a stairwell, I did very minimal color correcting and editing, so it still looks pretty natural. And this is an instance where, like, you don't have to go overboard with editing at all. You can keep it cool. You can keep it fresh. Editing is one of my favorite things to do ever. And now that we are almost done, let's look at the final photos. I'm so excited. <laughs> I appreciate y'all so much and also thank you to iPad Direct one more time for sponsoring this vid. Y'all are awesome. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.